The 34th card is the 10 of diamonds. Yeah. So let's see if you can grab it. I'll, I'll try. Oh, oh the boy. <laughs> What's good, my family? Another day, another video out here in beautiful Los Angeles. So I did promise you guys that this week I was gonna teach you guys something to be able to enhance your magic. So I brought the man. I said I brought the man, the myth, the legend. This boy's been teaching magic on YouTube for the past five years. And we decided to put a video together for you guys today. Mr. 52 Cards. <laughs> that was that awkward like, we got it. <laughs> My name is Wendy De La Rosa. I'm from Cuba. And remember, dream big and do much bigger. I'm in love in the shape of you Like a shrimp pull up in my neck Although my heart is falling too I'm in love with your body And last night you were in pain Hey, okay My guys, we are here with the man As I said before, Asad from 52 Cards How you doing, man? What's up, you guys? I'm doing great He's an incredible magic teacher Now, I'm all about the performance I'm all about going out in the street Going out there and do it But he is a technical master On his channel, you'll find technical tutorials You'll find trick tutorials You'll find a lot of teaching aspects in the magic view I told him today Before I even got into YouTube Back when I was a young grasshopper I remember watching <laughs> your videos, bro yeah, this is crazy. like, it's, like it's, it's insane. We're doing a video together. How and now we're doing that? a video together. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to pick 10 people to give some of your personal cards. Tell us a little bit about these. Yeah, I mean, these are the Raspberry Mint decks. I produced these last year. And it's kind of like a deck by magicians for magicians. Giving away it's just 10 true. decks to 10 people. Yeah, it's going to be really, really cool. Uh, these cards, I've been playing with them all day. If you're a magician, you're definitely going to love them. Go and check out the first link below. That's his channel. <laughs> Watch this video beforehand, my boy. <laughs> but what are we going to learn today, my man? Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to teach you just a classic move in magic, not even magic, like this is something that you will want to learn even if you're not interested in magic. It's a flourish, an impressive piece of eye candy. It's called a card spring. It looks something like this. Oh! When I was getting into magic initially, one of the greatest things that I've learned was definitely how to do this. I learned how to do that and I was like, oh my god, this is incredible. And then I learned how to do a spring. And this is probably something that I use more than anything in any of my routines. It's such a powerful, short, compact way to grab their attention, yeah. both visibly and audibly. But you will find that sometimes you'll do the most amazing mentalism <laughs> trick. And to uh, some people. And to some people, this you'll do this, <laughs> and they'll start freaking out. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tio. <laughs> this is how I do things in life. <laughs> and you just like... I don't know. She freaked out more about the car spring than the actual mental trick. Like, I've been working on that fucking trick. How the fuck you... Can you do that? That's all I'm gonna do from now on. I'm just gonna do springs and... And it yeah. immediately demonstrates that you know what you're doing. Exactly. you're good at what you do. When people see that, they know. Even with magicians, like you yeah. bring it out and it's kind of like an unwritten rule. Like whoever has the best spring <laughs> is probably the best magician. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I mean, it's just like one of those staples. It's a great move to learn. I think you guys are going to get a lot of value out of it. First step, man. Where, where do you even start with this thing? All right, here we go. So the grip is extremely important. And it's going to vary a little bit from person to person just because we all have different hands. We have different hand sizes. But here's the general grip. So you're going to start in your mechanics grip. That's what this is called. So you're going to come over the right hand and it's a grip like this you're gonna be holding it by the corners now sometimes you'll see people hold it like at the front and back edges I don't like that method I think it's a superior method to do it from the corner you do it from the corners as well right? I do it from the corners yeah, you know better. I started out actually shooting them forward I did too where you have the grip from your thumb in the middle of the cards mm -hmm. and you kind of very ratchetly hold the cards with all four it's fingers like, it's like a brute force method kinda. it's a brute force method yeah. if, if, if you're getting into this don't learn it the wrong way yes learn this, from our mistakes yeah learn, learn from our avoid mistakes. that because the the way that we're going to teach you is a lot more finesse involved. There's a it's lot a more softer finesse. touch. It comes across more aesthetic. It makes a nicer sound. This is how we used to do it before. Yeah. It has a very rigid feel to it overall. But then yeah. when you're able to do it backwards, it's just it just Fresh. sounds nice and it. Honestly, it just, you have much more control, Absolutely. you know? For example, when I do my card through bottle routine, that's when I probably do something like this, because the you cards- You want it to be like loud. You like, want yeah. it to be loud, you want it to be rigid, and the cards shoot out further. Yeah. But there's much less control. But yeah. in the context of a flourish, in the context of eye candy, it's nice to have a soft touch to make it smooth, to make it elegant, and that's why we shoot it from the corners. So you come over with your dominant hand, and you're gonna grip it from the corner, so that's your thumb, at the inner left corner of the deck. And I like to use my first two fingers on the outer right corner. 
It's mainly my middle finger, and then my first finger is also on the corner, okay. right beside it. Where is the top part of the deck landing in your middle finger? Yeah, okay, good question. So I'm holding it in such a way that I'm barely hanging on to the very bottom part of the deck. Same right. goes with my thumb. So right. you're not overextending too much, you're just holding it at the very edges. And then I also place my first finger right beside my middle finger, and that provides just a little bit more support. So from here, you're doing a squeezing action. You're applying tension in the cards. This move is all about tension and the release of that tension. That's what creates the spring. At this point, you begin to apply that tension, and without the cards in place, you're literally just squeezing. And what you'll find is that it puts a, a bow in the cards, yeah. You don't need to apply that much pressure. In the beginning, you might find that you need to apply a bit more. You're squeezing like this, right? And then to release it, you're, it's kind of like you're rolling your thumb backwards. Yeah. And that's how I like to think about it. Completely. You squeeze, and then you're rolling your thumb backwards, and that's going to allow the cars to, one at a time, release the grip from your thumb and develop mm -hmm. that smooth, consistent flow. And shooting the back. The most important thing is the thumb, that thumb motion. And then with time, you're going to be able to do it from a further and further distance yeah. and in a smoother and smoother way. As you practice it more and more, as you get those repetitions in, your muscle memory comes in. Your absolutely. muscle memory comes in and you'll be able to do it with very little tension. I know some people are concerned that by doing this move, you're going to kind of ruin your cards. Yeah. But that's not no. the case. Once not, you practice it, I mean, in the beginning you might. But you know what I also do? Like sometimes after I've done the spring, I'll either riffle them back up like this. Yeah, just to counter that bow effect. Exactly. Uh, what you don't want is a choppy spring. You want an even distribution of cards flowing out. There we go. Instead, I like that. Yeah. instead of Instead of like one, two, yeah. three, four. That's not so good. And it's okay if it's like that in the beginning. It will be. Of course, it will be. But in time, that's the goal. It's smooth, consistent. No hesitation, no breaks. And definitely, guys, like when you're first practicing this, practice on top of your bed. Yes. Or on top of the surface like this. You where don't want to play where you, card pick up all the time. You don't want to have to pick this guy up all the time. <laughs> but, uh, psh, all right, great joke, all right, great joke, Danny. Some people release it from the front, some people release it from the back. I prefer the back. I prefer the back. Right, okay. Yeah. I'm glad we're in agreement. Otherwise, I was going to argue with you. You have to shoot the cards backwards. And what we mean by that is that the motion of the cards as they're leaving your hand, they're going to be shooting out from your thumb and not from your forefingers. So let's clarify one thing. When we say shoot backwards, it's not actually shooting backwards. What we mean is shooting from the back of the deck. The cards, they're actually shooting more like straight down. Yeah. And the way that you do that, since you're shooting it from your thumb, is you kind of angle the cards outwards a little bit. You're kind of showing the face of the cards. Absolutely. You're tilting your hand. You do the same thing, right? Completely. And by doing that, the cards actually shoot almost straight down. You want to angle your thumb downward, because if you don't do that, then the cards really are going to be shooting backwards. You see some of the starting magicians, too, catch it with their stomach. Yeah, that's not good. Don't get don't used do that. to that. That's what your pinky's for, you know? Yeah, the back is better. <laughs> it, it, it's smoother, it creates a nicer sound, and you have more control if you release it from the We're top. still talking about cards, right? Now tell me about the cradle. Yeah, okay, so the second part of this is catching the card. You don't want to catch it in like a sloppy way. It doesn't look of good course. if you do it, and then you're like... <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like, okay, caught him. So you want to learn this cradle grip. It's also, I also call it a straddle grip sometimes. Nice. And it's just a way to catch the card so that it's clean. Thumb is hair, first finger is hair, middle and right finger hair, and then your pinky. Pinky is key. Pinky is key. It's sticking from the back and it's acting as a break. You're shooting backwards. And it's hitting your pinky. This cradle grip is so great because the cards are landing in a perfect position yeah. so you're ready to go. They you can't know? fall. They cannot fall. They cannot. And then honestly, all you gotta do at this point is just thumb and square up and you're good. You're, you're ready back to in the go. Kick. That's what I like about this so much. If you were shooting them like this, yeah. then you had kinda have to like, you know, square them up. Yeah. But with all four fingers, you kinda create the cradle and then you just bring them in. It's you clean. know? It's super clean. super clean. Now you're ready to go. You, you can do, you know, from here, whatever it is that you want. Literally like a baby's cradle. The cards are the baby, your hand in the cradle, put the cards in the cradle, and you got it! A key tip here that's really gonna help you is when you first start to shoot the cards, you want your hands to be pretty close to each other. You don't wanna like separate the cards and start shooting from here, because mm -hmm. then it becomes hard to aim. Here's what it looks like without the cards. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be hard if you start with your cards apart and then shoot, because then you have to worry about aim, and eventually if you practice enough, you can do it. What you should do first is you start with your hands close together, you do the spring, let me do it without hands, and then as you're only having maybe when you have like 10 or 15 cards left, you start to bring your hands back together. Even us, both of us have been doing springs for years. For years. Let's try let's aiming it. Right, let's, let's try it, go for it. Three, two, one. Like, okay. you got it, you kind of have to come in a little bit. Though. 
You know, like, we can do it, but it's something that we'd never do. You were talking about the wave. Without the cards in my hands, it's coming, you know, from an in position to an out position and bringing them back in. Yeah. One of the things that I love to do, start with your hands in, bring them out, and then once the last card shoots out, bring mm -hmm. this card up. So not necessarily bring them back together, but yeah. it looks like you're going much further than you actually so, are. I really like that, and that's like the, the pro way of doing it. It makes it look really impressive. It so gives the illusion that your hands are actually further apart than they really were. Here's another thing that just popped into my mind. If you're using like a brand new deck of cards that's stiff, sometimes, you know, if you use like bicycle yeah. cards, they're really stiff when you first right. open them. It's gonna be harder. Yeah. You wanna use a deck that's a little bit worn in, that's soft. Eventually, don't worry, you'll be able to do it with any deck. Yeah. But if you're just starting out, Try to find a softer deck and that's going to help you out. It's definitely a deck that still has that smoothness to it, you know? Absolutely. Repetition is most definitely, without a doubt, the mother of skill. So the yeah. more you practice, you're going to be able to literally, as you said, do it with any deck. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if the cards are super rusty or if it's a brand new deck. Guys, you got to practice. If, if you're starting Magician, it's going to take you a couple days. It might take you a couple weeks, depending on how much you're doing. I used to be that kid in class being like... Yeah. <laughs> like doing it 10 million table. times. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, <laughs> It's all muscle memory. It's all muscle memory. Yeah. You're gonna be able to do it in your sleep. This is gonna be like the most in-depth sprint tour on YouTube. I've seen some people do it up. I never learned how to do that though. Let me see. <laughs> oh. oh, wait, hold Nailed on. It. Was that up? That was good. Ah, I'm gonna mess You up. got it. <laughs> I've literally never even tried before. Ah! <laughs> Have fun with it, my voice. Go check this guy out. We did a twirl on his channel. It's actually yeah, one of my favorite mental effects that we taught on his channel. So go do that, and you have an opportunity to win one of these babies. So I mean, you obviously have to be subscribed to this channel too. Obviously, yeah. subscribe to both. Uh, duh. Daniel's channel is like perfect for learning the application of these techniques, how to really connect with real people and establish relationships and just use it to enrich your life. My channel is more about the, the technique behind it, it's more of like an academic channel, but combining the two together, powerful. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> when with our powers, powers combined, combined, we can magic. I don't know what we're gonna say. <laughs> 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 All right, that sucks. Let's get this video to what? How many? How many th thumbs up? What do you think we can get with this? Ten thousand. 8,000? Do, do you want it? Do I don't want to be okay. too ambitious, but I don't want to be too weak. Okay, I think we can pull off a solid 8,000. 8,000? I think we can do, do it. it. Honestly, okay, okay. if we get 8,000 thumbs up on this video, do you want to do another video? Yeah, that's right. Without powers combined, <laughs> we're <Without> right <laughs> <that. laughs> We can do, do it, it, my guys. Do you know my outro? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I, is I don't have it memorized. What is <laughs> do do better, do bigger? Do better, do better. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> and remember to dream big and do much bigger. That's Boom. what it was. <laughs> I can't guarantee this is gonna work, but we'll, we'll try. Come on, my boy, we're cheating this, come on. <laughs>